Right. Hey, Rick. Oh, yes, Russ. Okay, great. Let's just use it up. Stretch your nose out, pull on the shoulders a little bit. Second, the elbows. And the side. together. Shift that a little bit. Big roll in the hips. A little bit of sweat. Mm -hmm. 
Very changing the site. And just rolling up the end. A bit of a time to over. Second of the floor. Keeping that leg down, rolling up the knee, up to the side, up to the back, and swing it back in. Side, back. Side, back. Shake it out, change it to the side. <clears throat> Very cool looking at it to the side. Sticking to the wrist a little bit, the knee kill. Changing your back. Into a katagashi. And you know what? Top on the cap. Change inside. Right, seems to sink you. Change the other. Here's over. <clears throat> Great, and to uh, you and I. Switching on. The fingers. <clears throat> I 
present your fists. Great. Okay, we'll take it a little bit into a tiny angle straight away. So just take it one side, roll it in, find in the back, move it aside. So we'll play this like a two step. So <clears throat> first play with it just in a, in a kind of basic way. You can find the time and go here and then straight away from this movement. Think about coiling the hip back into this position. So got one and then straight back. That's the second movement coming into the command. So you've got one and then the hip, hip, rolling back. Just let the hips kind of follow the feet. Let the hands follow the hips like that. The hands get kind of released from the hips. So, short body to go backwards and straight back.
Okay. The key thing with this again is, is the weight in the feet. So just try and feel when you're in this position. The key with this, that kind of 50 50 position, the whole point of that is so that you can then just adjust the feet and then and then be able to move back with it. So just play this really simple exercise. Just stand, you stand like shoulder width apart. Place your weight in either foot. So you can put it in like the left or the right, and then choose which leg you remove back. So you're gonna do I'll show the full thing. So you just take one leg back like that. That or that way. Okay. Now, if you're weighted in the right leg as you do that movement, this is really easy. You just the leg just goes back. If I'm weighted in the wrong leg and I try to choose that leg to go back, I've got to shift it or fall into it. But it's really obvious. But just play with it a little bit just so you can feel what happens to the body. So you'll get the same response happens in this. If I'm weighted in the front too much. I've got to kind of rock out of the leg and adjust it and come through. So kind of all these adjustments will happen. So the same, the same thing will happen. But just get a feel that you can go or kind of um, you want to shift the weight. Feel one way, feel one way. Step back. And then just try and get it one way you feel like you're neutral and that you can shift and move the weight. Shift and move the weight. So you should you should feel free in this position. This is an easy position because you've got closely 50-50. Feel that you can decide either way. So you go left or right. It shouldn't really matter. So, but you just need to feel that you can shift and move. You want that, that kind of decision should be the same as the movement. So I want to go right, right. Left, left. So we'll make it really <clears throat> kind of seamless. Just play now, play with the same thing. Keep the arms kind of out of it, but play with going into a Tainenko. So you go into, into Hamina. But yeah, feel the weight go like 50 50. And then the key thing with this is that shift to the back hip and then just follow in the foot. So pretty much exactly the same idea. You're just working now from a, from a Hamina stance. With that, try and get the weight kind of 50 50 loaded and then shift it. Okay, great. Start to bring it together now. So you're going to work in a, in a kind of kindergarten way. So you rotate into it now. Yeah. And then step into it. So, so the hips, again, that kind of key rule with this is that the hips stay in motion with this one. So you've got mobility through the hips all the time with this one. So that 50-50 that, that point is, is like a really brief, brief point in the fall. Almost not really there. You're looking to get to that position, but you're mobile. Or you can set the foot. And you out of the hips and the feet footwork. Yeah, the key thing to watch now, do this, do this slow, but really check, especially in this movement. Just watch the this back leg. So watch as you go in and not adjusting it and then going against it this way. So let the knee follow, let the knee and the, the knees and the toes follow the direction of the body. 
basically. So the, the, in this case, the body's going back because I want the knee and the, the foot to, to be in that kind of like, I don't want in this case the, the, the direction of the body to be against the, against the joint in this one. So let's go to a point where you can do that slowly and feel that you can get the knee and the toes with the direction of the, of the body. Uh, with the direct, yeah, with the direction of the body. Let's slowly see so you can really feel that you're working with the joints. Yeah, yeah, that's what it says. So. Okay, great. And then just start to bring the hands into it. So again, that position, we've got like 50-50 in the hands in that position. That's going to be a really brief kind of point in the form. So you're going to kind of find it, flow, flow out of it. Find it, flow out of it. But it's not a kind of held position in this form. So you've got like one, they follow. So again, you just want the hand tight in the hip work. One, two. One, two. We will take this in tomorrow to door. So just going to get into a basic form. Focus now on that sense of the weight in that foot and then that again, opening of the hip, pressing the body back, tying it into the hand work. So you've got there and then that kind of opening out. So you're doing it now with a, with a form behind it, with a core piece and you work through it. Okay, great. And we'll take this into another variation on the Morotogori. So you go in the same way, this way. This time you're going to adjust the front leg, cut out low. So you cut out low with this arm, and then you're coming through with this arm to take against the elbow. So in terms of the basic one for this one, it goes in, rotate, make some space, draw, draw out, and then you've got a big step through extension with the arm. So again, just let the arm kind of follow the movement with the hip. Got one, 
as the hip cuts out, the arm cuts out, as the back hip steps in, the arm kind of punches through the rhythm. We'll take this to uh, Kinagari form. So the, the footwork changes now on this one, you're going to go in, but that back leg's going to swing out and the handwork in this case, you've got this kind of go into like a diamond above the head. It feels like one, two, yeah, and then you continue this motion. One, into two, goes that way. It's going to have a big, big movement of the hip work. One, one. So much more fluid in this one. Big movement of the body. One, hands up to the, towards the top of the head. Continue the hip work. Let's do with the back hip. <laughs> Yeah, if you want, just play with this with one, one arm. So it's the front arm that does most of it. You go one here, and then this arm, this hit, cut out. And then you're stepping through with the back leg. So keeping this one's left up front arm, so it goes up with the rotation. Up. And then this hit, the same hit, cuts out. Yeah. And then you're stepping through with it. You got one, two, three. Okay, so the front leg. One, two, rotation, slight cut out, and then that's it.
We'll do one more. We'll go to an Ikkyo. So again, a Morotadori. You've got the same entry in this one. And now from here again, use the same idea. You make space with this leg. Yeah, but this time rather than going low with this arm, you go up to the top. So this arm's going to go up, opens the person up. The idea of this is to is to draw them out into the into this position here. So you're also opening them up for an attempt, but you drop in one, open up, and then open up this hole. Open up this hole. You've got an attempt point here, but you just will now want to flow into the here. Open the hands, close the hands of the grip. Step in behind. So you've got the Morotodori grip. One, create some space, open up to the top, and then find the grip and drop the hip. Step in. So the basic form one, two, three, four. Try and fill in this one. There's a, there's, a, there's a lowering and a dropping of the center work. So when you drop in this way, you've got this position. Now, this move to go back in, I can't do just by kind of stepping out and opening the hand this way. I, I, that, that move will basically just get blocked by the person. So think about this going underneath, underneath, and then from this position, then I open the hand out that way. So it's, it's, it's going through the body this way rather than. In, in that kind of that kind of level. So think about dropping in underneath it, and then that comes out from the ground up. One. Yeah, and then once you've got them in that weak position, you can just drop into the yeah, no problem. I think that's kind of coming out of the ground. All in up. Yes, yeah, that's it. Okay, good. Great. And then the Kimono Grab basically makes this uh, more clear in a way. The movement now is bigger again. So You've got the same idea as the last one. You're going to let this foot drop out to the back. So you, you enter into a rotation with this one. Again, this idea of going down and then up is really clear in this one. So you go down into the movement and then up, find that position. And then you're into the yeah, yeah. But You've got a bigger movement in, so you're drawing the person into a rotation and dropping down into it this way. And then from here, that same movement, that, that, Continue the spiral, find the grip, and then you're in to the issue. So it goes with a rotation down, open it, find the grip, set it. This is really kind of spiral work. So think about dropping into a spiral, rolling out of it with the hips, and sinking it with the step. This is a, like a low to high variation. Nice.
Okay, good. The key with this is the position of the elbow. So again, it's really based like if you look at Murakadori, that kind of that kind of movement, keeping the elbow low, keeping the elbow low. And uh, what's the technique? Yeah, this variation where you get pulled down. So you've got the person here and the variation where your arms being pulled down. If you've ever done this one with the Murakadori. The key with this again is controlling the elbow. So I need to get the center underneath it. And then you're coming, you're coming into this form. So this form of Giko is kind of similar to that idea. But the key thing I don't want to happen in this one is that the arm goes into this kind of position. Yeah, and then I can't get underneath it with the with the arm. I'm forced to kind of to, to go into the kind of bicep with it. So this one, keep the keep this kind of cocky shape as you go into it. This, 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 this kind of position. So this kind of shape. And then from here, I can get the hip behind the elbow to do that movement. But if it's here, that's going to be tricky to kind of do. And if I've got weight loaded onto the wrist, that's almost going to be impossible to lift the arm. But if I'm in that position, that's possible this way. So just think about the position of the elbow as you do this. Especially at that point here, I need the, I need the hip to be pressing out of the elbow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. That's it. Uh, <laughs> Right, lastly, just to make it extended, go into an arousal with it. So you drop it in. Yeah, you've got this one. So you've got a much bigger movement in that second, second uh, step. So you've got one, two, follow it. So it's just like sustain that connection through the body. That a spiral of the body. Okay, we'll change it. So we'll go into a Nikyo. So this one, again, you've got Muro to Dorga. This is a kind of special, um, a specific technique in terms of the Nikyo. So what you do in this one, kind of hard to explain, but you've got the two hands grabbed, right? So in this one, you go against the other side, this one, but this hand, your own hand's going to come across and, and basically trap the hand on it. Now in this one, this is a much sharper move, but follows the same idea. You get underneath it with the hip, roll this back, and then what you're doing is connecting the center to the hand, so you're cutting down with this one. So in the solo work, it's gonna go like this one, cutting over, and then this part of the hand's gonna cut in, cut in with the center this way. And then if you continue it, you pin it into the ground. But the key point is this, that same idea of using the center work, lowering in, getting underneath it with the elbow, cutting in, it's just much more contained now. But the other is you drop over, bring the hand onto the wrist, cut back with the hip, Back, back, and then this cuts in, cuts in with the body. So you've got this kind of flexible cut happening through the hand, through the trunk. This is a little rectory, Nikki. Yeah. Let's see this guy. That's it, that's it, that's it.
And again, the key thing, think about spiral work. So as you go in, that the, the hands are spiraling in. As you go out, the hands spiraling open. So it's working in this kind of this kind of area. This and then this movement also is a spiral that way. That way. So if you got in this position, you're actually cutting, you're cutting away from the person's joint system. So you've trapped the arm in and you've got them here, and you're going to cut them in this direction. So in this one, you're cutting them into a hole that way, somewhere like that. And in this one, you want to come in. One, but think about again passing spirals from the hip, hip, hip into the hand. So it's really like sword work, so it's just like applied sword work this way, sword work this way. Right. And then the last few play with it in a kind of kindergarten way. So this is done now on context as the person comes in, you want to track them in and drop them into it. So the technique kind of happens super fast with this one. So play with this one. You still got that idea of kind of rolling the hip, rolling the hip, but straight out once it's kind of come back and cut it. It's like so drawing the person again into a spiral. A little bit of a bigger hip work in terms of coming in with this, like that foot chain, and then roll at the back, cut down into it. You're kind of drawing a figure of eight with the hip work. So you go E, change it, cut it. But that all happens now you want. E, change it, cut it. E, change it, cut it. It's like a kind of snake. And then you cut it with Try it. Just play with this one. Don't worry so much about the angles, the person or whatever. It's more about now getting these kind of transitions much softer. That, that, that. That, that, that. That's it. Yeah, the main thing with these, it's like all techniques, especially these restraint techniques, and especially the Marotta door, think about the, the actual teaching of these, not about kind of wrist and arm work, but about kind of center work. So as long as I can keep the center free, again, like Marotta door, poking up, center's free to move, then I can kind of control the person. The same with these, the center's free to move, then I can control the person through the arm. So think in this part, the, the key thing that's, that's free in the motion is how you're working the, the center of the body. So play with all the movement, whatever you do, it's going to come center, 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 drops in through. And if you think about sword work, think about, you always want that, you always want the hips, the center, the waist to be free to move. And then once they're free to move, I can get to a good angle. I can apply pressure through. Okay, the last few minutes we'll go to the bucket. Take a bucket.
Okay, first you just play with this, so you're in the Kamai here. And again, this idea of just linking the hands into the hip work, just moving, walking. But again, feel that the, the, the main thing in this idea is that the hips connect into the hands, but the, the, you're free in the feet. So let's kind of move the hips. So, nice and soft in the arms, let them just kind of follow the motion of the hip. With it, the connection just starts to increase the complexity a little bit. Okay, just start to play with these kind of ideas now with the arm, so a little bit free with the arm. Keep the idea, again, working the elbows kind of low to the body, so don't make, don't start with, um, with two big movements of the arm. Keep the elbows, the focus being the elbows drop, but just play with, like basically turn into this kind of either like a kind of figure of eight motion, which you can expand into a, into a yoko in, or kind of more like this kind of slicing motions. Just play with now. The a um, little bit more complex movements. Perfect. And then just keep those motions going. And again, when you feel like it with this, just start to really open them out. It's kind of striking with it. So be engaged in through the center fully with the cut. Really play with it. Yeah. All this bit. Every softness really lands the way through with the same feeling as if kind of applying the technique through like a Nikkyo or a Nikkyo. It's got a kind of finality to it. Thank you. 
Okay, great. Just take it now, the sword is one-handed, one and then using the other, just give yourself a little bit of pressure in and out, and just play with the idea of kind of rolling spirals through the arms. Once you've got that kind of connection in with the head, just kind of vary the pressure, vary the, the distance of the body, and vary this kind of <clears throat> angle in the, the body as well. With a feeling, the feeling here is like it's coming onto the, the soul's coming onto the body a little bit. It's kind of pressing back into the body. Once you've got that feeling, just start to move with it. And obviously you can change hands freely with it. Just explore again that connection, especially the elbow to the hip. So. Great, and then the last you play with again that idea of from the sword, you've got a few options here. You can play with kind of cutting through with it, like you would with a kind of mixture of dropping it, cutting it, or like a kind of remi nugget, this kind of roll over, cook you know, You can also play if you want with a kind of grip, going into like an ikkyo. But that same idea of kind of you flow with it, play with it, and then drop in the hip. Flow with it, drop in the hip. So you want one point of it to be a kind of with a feeling of energy entering into the ground through the whole work. So just as you're with the school. Okay, okay, perfect. We just got that. Hey, right. Domo, Araga. Domo, Araga. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael.
Thank you. Thank you.